Hi guys! Welcome to another episode of Learn with Sir Glenn. So for this video, we're going to discuss Factor Theorem. So, let's go! So before I proceed with the lesson, let's review first the definition of factor. So in mathematics, factor is a number or expression that divides another number or expression evenly or with no remainder. So for example, you have 6 and 3. 3 is a factor of 6 since you can divide 6 by 3 without remainder. So same thing that will apply to your polynomial. If you can divide a polynomial without remainder, then your divisor is a factor of your dividend. Suppose you want to know, is x minus 1 a factor of 2x raised to 7 plus 3x raised to 5 minus x minus 4? So you can actually check it by dividing your polynomials using long division or synthetic division. But again, that will take long since you just simply want to identify if it is a factor or not, you can use the factor theorem. So according to the factor theorem, if p of x is a polynomial function and x minus c is a factor of p of x, then p of c is equal to 0. Then we can also have the factor theorem converse, which is if p of c is equal to 0, then x minus c is a factor of p of x. So in our given here, is x minus 1 a factor of 2x raised to 7 plus 3x raised to 5 minus x minus 4? So what we're going to do is just simply identify if p of c is equal to 0 or not. If p of c is 0, then it is a factor. If p of c is not a 0, then it is not a factor. If we're going to remember in our previous lesson, p of c is the remainder when you divide the polynomial function p of x by x minus c. So meaning, if the remainder is 0, it is a factor. If the remainder is not 0, it is not a factor. So how to use the factor theorem? Let's have the, our question a while ago. Is x minus 1 a factor of 2x raised to 7? plus 3x raised to 5 minus x minus 4. So according to the factor theorem, if p of x is a polynomial function and x minus c is a factor of p of x, then p of c is equal to 0. And factor theorem converse, we will have if p of c is equal to 0, then x minus c is a factor of p of x. So all we have to do is to identify if p of c is 0 or not. So since we're going to look for the p of c, we're going to get the p of x and the x minus c, the same with what we did on the remainder theorem. So therefore, we will have p of x equal to 2x raised to 7 plus 3x raised to 5 minus x minus 4. Then all we have to do is to replace x with c to get p of c. And we can obtain our c by equating your divisor to 0 and solving for x. So x is equal to 1, therefore c is equal to 1. So we're going to replace our x on our polynomial p of x with one. So therefore, we will have p of 1 is equal to 2 times 1 raised to 7 plus 3 times 1 raised to 5 minus 1 minus 4. Replacing all the x variables on our polynomial with the value of c which is 1. Then all you have to do is to solve for this using PEMDAS rule. So we're going to evaluate all the exponents first. That will give us p of 1 is equal to 2 times 1 plus 3 times 1 minus 1 minus 4. Then perform all the multiplications. So we will have p of 1 is equal to 2 plus 3 minus 1 minus 4. And perform the addition and subtractions, whichever comes first from left to right. So 2 plus 3 is 5, minus 1 is 4, minus 4 is 0. So p of 1 is equal to 0. Since p of 1 is 0, which is our remainder, then we can say that x minus 1 is a factor of 2x raised to 7 plus 3x raised to 5 minus x minus 4. So let's have another one. Determine if x plus 2 is a factor of 2x cubed minus 4x squared plus 4x plus 16. So again, we just simply look for p of c. If p of c is 0, it is a factor. If p of c is not 0, it is not a factor. So to do that, we identify our p of x and x minus c. So we will have p of x is equal to 2x cubed minus 4x squared plus 4x plus 16. Then we look for our c. So we equate our divisor to 0. 
then x is equal to negative 2, so therefore c is equal to negative 2. So all we have to do now is to replace our x variable with the value of c which is negative 2. So we will have p of negative 2 is equal to 2 times negative 2 raised to 3 minus 4 times negative 2 raised to 2 plus 4 times negative 2 plus 16. So replacing all the x variables with the value of c which is negative 2. So simplifying this further, evaluating all, all the exponents, we will have p of negative 2 is equal to 2 times negative 8, that is negative 2 raised to 3, minus 4 times 4, which is negative 2 raised to 2, plus 4 times negative 2 plus 16. Then perform all the multiplications, we will have p of negative 2 is equal to negative 16, minus 16, plus negative 8, plus 16. Then perform the addition and subtractions whichever comes first from left to right. So negative 16 minus 16 is negative 32 plus negative 8 is negative 40 plus 16 is negative 24. So P of negative 2 is equal to negative 24 which is our remainder. So since this is not 0 then x plus 2 is not a factor of 2x cubed minus 4x squared plus 4x plus 16. Okay, so let's have another one. So, is x minus 3 a factor of x cubed minus 2x squared minus 2x minus 3? So, to do that, we have to check if our p of c is 0 or not. So, if it is 0, factor. If it is not 0, not a factor. So, we get our p of x and x minus c. So, we will have p of x equal to x cubed minus 2x squared minus 2x minus 3. Then, we're going to get the value of c so that we can replace the x with the value of c. So to do that, we equate your divisor x minus 3 to 0, solve for x, then c is equal to 3. So all you have to do now is to replace all the x variables on our polynomial function with the value of c. So we will have p of 3 is equal to 3 cubed minus 2 times 3 times squared minus 2 times 3 minus 3. Replacing all the x variables with the value of c which is 3. So performing all the exponents, we will have p of 3 is equal to 27 minus 2 times 9 minus 2 times 3 minus 3. Performing all the multiplications, we will have 27 minus 18 minus 6 minus 3. So simplifying this one further, we will have p of 3 is equal to 0. So this is your remainder. So since it is 0, then x minus 3 is a factor of x cubed minus 2x squared minus 2x minus 3. Okay, so let's have our last example. So check if x minus 2 is a factor of x raised to 4 minus 2x minus 8. So again, we have to get our p of c. By doing that, we have to identify p of x and x minus c. So we will have p of x is equal to x raised to 4 minus 2x minus 8. Then we have to get our c by equating your divisor to 0 and solving for x, which is x equals 2, so c is equal to 2. So we're going to replace x with the value of c, which is 2. So by doing that, we will have p of 2 is equal to 2 raised to 4 minus 2 times 2 raised to 2 minus 8. So replacing all your x variables with the value of c, which is 2. Then perform all the exponents, we will have p of 2 is equal to 16, that is 2 raised to 4, minus 2 times 4, minus 8. Then we will have p of 2 is equal to 16, minus 8, minus 8. Then simplifying this further, we will have p of 2 is equal to 0. So this is our remainder. So since it is equal to 0, then x minus 2 is a factor of x raised to 4, minus 2x, minus 8. So, okay, so that's it. We're done. Thank you for watching and hope you have learned something from this video.